Well, hello, hello. Good evening, beautiful people. Good evening, Lupus Warriors. Welcome to another video brought to you by the Lord's Lupus channel. For those of you that are not familiar with me, let me introduce myself. My name is Laura and I created the Laura's Lupus channel with three goals in mind. The first one, to increase awareness. The second one, to educate. And the third one is to encourage lupus warriors all around the world. I wanted to use this platform as a place of support and a secure place that we could talk about all things lupus, the hard things, the tough things, the things that uh, we can't talk about with everyone else. A secure place that we could talk about the good, the bad, and the in-between. And no matter where you are on this lupus journey, whether you're at the beginning, the middle, or the latter part, which means that you've been walking on this lupus journey for a long time, I can guarantee you that you will take away something useful from each one of my videos. And so I want to invite you to join me. Uh, join me and support me by hitting that subscribe button, hitting the like button, hitting the bell so that you receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. Also, share the videos and leave a comment below in the comment section. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you choose to, okay? And so tonight on this video, we're going to talk about what is it that caused uh, us to be predisposed to getting lupus? Have you ever wondered that? What is it that caused you or placed you at a higher predisposition of getting lupus? I know when I was first diagnosed with lupus, the first questions that I asked was, what is lupus? How did I get it? And where did it come from? And so um, there are four factors that contribute to a person being at a higher risk of getting lupus. Okay. And so that's what we're going to discuss tonight. And so even though I'm increasing awareness and I'm educating, I also sprinkle a little bit of encouragement in my videos as well, because we could all use some encouragement. I don't know anyone who uh, couldn't use just a dash of encouragement. So I splash a little dash of encouragement here and there. OK, but anyway, let's talk about the four factors that places a person at a predisposition of getting lupus. Those four factors are your environment. Infections. Uh, your genetics and hormones. Well, let's break that down a little further. Let's take one, each one individually, and let's talk about it. Uh, the environment. If you lived in a uh, area where you were exposed to pollution or a highly polluted area, that increases your risk of possibly developing lupus. Uh, if you were exposed to certain chemicals, it places you at a higher risk of getting lupus. And get this, cigarette smoke. Whether you were a smoker or you were exposed to secondhand cigarette smoke, it raises your risk of possibly developing lupus. Number two, infections. Infections from bacteria and viruses. Now, does that mean that all infections or viruses can lead to lupus? No, it does not. There's one particular one that studies find that if you have ever been infected with this particular virus, that it does put you at a higher risk of being, or it places you at a higher predisposition of getting lupus. And that is the Epstein-Barr virus. And I'm not going to go into that on this video. On another video, we will discuss the Epstein virus, Epstein-Barr virus, what it is, the symptoms, how you can catch it. But for now, just know that one of the main uh, viruses that can lead to or possibly lead to you getting lupus is the Epstein-Barr virus. Number three is genetics. And genetics is your family lineage. If someone in your family, if there's a history of lupus in your family, in your bloodline, then that places you at a higher risk of getting lupus. Um, if someone in your family uh, or family members had, you know, any type of autoimmune disorders or any other autoimmune diseases that can place you at a higher risk of developing lupus. And the fourth one, hormones. This is especially true for women. Um, the majority of cases and the biggest percentage of people with lupus are females. Um, and that's not by happenstance. It's because we have a hormone called estrogen that circulates in our body. And when we're younger, estrogen is higher. As we get older, estrogen decreases in our body. 
And so between the ages of 16 and 25, women are more higher, uh, are at a higher risk of developing lupus due to uh, this hormone called estrogen. And then the other factors that I discussed uh, previously, um, the environment, heredity, uh, and infections, all of that, you know, compounded together with your hormones puts you at a higher risk of developing lupus. Now, it's not to say that men and children do not develop lupus because they do, but the majority of cases, 70 to 80% of cases um, in which there is a diagnosis of lupus are women, okay? So women are at a higher risk of being predisposed to getting lupus. Get this also. Um, It has been discovered that Lupus can lie dormant in your body for years without showing any signs or symptoms. And then something traumatic, a traumatic event takes place in your life, which causes lupus to erupt, which causes this uh, autoimmune response, this high autoimmune response to erupt in which the immune system starts to attack itself. And so what type of a traumatic event can cause such an eruption? It can be the loss of a loved one or a divorce. Anything that is traumatic for an individual person, if lupus has been lying dormant, it can cause it to erupt. Now, not to say that maybe a person does not experience any type of traumatic event, not to say that if lupus is lying dormant, that eventually that it will not rear uh, its head or it will not show up. But what increases the chances of this just this dormant lupus disease you know erupting and showing symptoms and you know just flaring up and becoming full flesh in a person's life sometimes it is erupted by a traumatic event okay and so i didn't want the video to be too long i'm going to wrap it up at this time i hope that you uh, were able to take away something useful helpful and informative that you can use along your lupus journey. As I always say at the end of every video, there is life after lupus. My friends, stay blessed, stay strong, stay safe, and stay encouraged. And I will talk to you soon on the next video. Okay, so bye for now. I'll talk to you later. Take care of yourselves. Bye.